This video will explain how to draw more circles and find the principal stresses acting on cell element. And we're going to look at two examples. Example number one on the left hand side, when we have cell element and we have a set of stresses acting on the top and on the right hand side. We also have stresses acting at the bottom and also on the left hand side of the cell element. But typically we don't write the values of these stresses because they are the same, just acting in the opposite direction. For example, here at the bottom, uh, the stress will be 8.2 and the shear stress will be 3.1. They just act in the opposite direction compared to the stresses here on the top to balance uh, the stresses on the top. And the same thing um, for stresses acting on the left hand side is going to be uh, compressive strength 4.2 and uh, share stress 3.1. So they do exist, these stresses, we just don't um, write them. And we're going to look at the second example, which is uh, quite similar, but you will see that uh, the numbers are different compared to the first example. And you will see that uh, the direction of uh, share stress acting on the top is also uh, opposite direction compared uh, to the example here on the left hand side. So we'll start with the first example. And uh, the first thing that we need to remember is that compressive stresses acting on cell elements, they're positive. Maybe from some other courses like structural engineering, you will see that uh, compressive stresses are negative, but in cell mechanics and geotechnical engineering, compressive stresses are positive. And here what we have is, uh, this is uh, sigma y. And this stress is uh, sigma x. And also we have shear stresses um, acting on the cell element on each side. So this stress is uh, sigma x y. And this one is uh, sigma y x. So as the compressive stresses are positive, so this is positive value and this also positive value. But uh, shear stresses can be positive and negative depends on the direction they act in. So um, what we have in some mechanics that uh, shear stresses, which uh, causes counterclockwise shape uh, is positive. So in this case, you will see that uh, if you have stresses acting in this direction, it's going to be positive because it's uh, counterclockwise. When stresses acting in this direction, it's going to be negative. So we will see in our example that uh, this shear stress, it's a counterclockwise, it's going to be positive. And this shear stress, it's uh, clockwise, is going to be negative. So what we know is um, these two points. So um, I'm going to write here, uh, this point will be uh, sigma equal 14.2. And shear stress is uh, positive is going to be 3.1 and for these uh, two stresses uh, the point will be sigma is equal 8.2 and shear stress it's uh, negative 3.1 so what we do next is uh, we draw axis and the most important thing is that uh, there should be a one-to-one -one scale if it's not one-to-one -one scale you won't be able to draw a circle so make sure that uh, what, what I have here, it's one to one scale. So uh, this distance four is gonna be somewhere here for. Okay, and next step is we're gonna find these two points. So 4.1, 14.2 and the shear stress 3.1. So I found this point. So how about I'm gonna call this one as point one and this is gonna be point two. So this is point one, and this is going to be point two. So this is the first step. Remember, axis, one to one scale, and then locate these two points. Okay, next step will be to connect these two points and to find the center of the circle. So that's what I did. So remember, this one is point one, this is point two. Uh, just uh, use the ruler and connect these two points. You see where it crosses the axis. So this point is gonna be the center. 
I can even put uh, letter C here. Um, and then what we need to do is we're going to find the radius. Uh, we can find the radius in two different ways. Uh, we can use a drawing compass. You put drawing compass uh, center here and point C, and then you just measure this uh, radius and you draw a circle. Uh, another way to do it uh, through the formulas. So this is the formula that we have for the radius where we need to know uh, compressor stresses and we also need to know shear stress. So what I did here, I put the numbers in the formula and uh, it gave me that radius will be 4.3 kilonewton per square meters. So which means that this value is 4.3. So next step is uh, we draw the circle, as I mentioned before, just use a drawing compass, put it right in the middle here and draw a circle. It should be nice and perfect. So uh, the one that I have here. And uh, what we can do next is we're going to find the principal stresses. So there are only two principal stresses, major principal stress and minor principal stress. Um, we can find principal stresses where uh, shear stress is equal to zero. So there are two points um, in this circle where shear stress is equal to zero. So this point number one and point number two. So these are the maximum stresses. So you will see that this is maximum possible stress and what we called a uh, major principal stress. And uh, um, another principal stress here, so this is minor point, we will call minor principal stress. So you see that at this point we have uh, shear stress equal zero, and here we also have shear stress equal zero. Another way to do it uh, without drawing circle, just use uh, this formula. So you will see here we have a uh, plus and a minus. So when we use plus, we're going to get a principal stress, a major principal stress. When we use minus, we're going to get a minor principal stress. And these are the values that we get using the formula. This is major and this is minor principal stress. And uh, if we draw a circle, uh, using the perfect scale and uh, the perfect drawing technique, we're going to use uh, the same values from the graph. We can go and find it as well. Now let's look at the second example. As I already mentioned, it's pretty simpler and we're going to use uh, the same drawing technique. Uh, we will start with the stresses on the right hand side. So we'll see that all compressive stresses is positive. So this is going to be sigma x and this is going to be um, shear stress. So let's look at the shear stress. You see how it acts uh, clockwise, which means negative. So this is going to be negative. So we have our first point uh, where shear stress is uh, 52.7. Uh, sorry, uh, normal stress, compressor stress 52.7 and shear stress is negative uh, 34.1. And now we need to find the second point, it's here. You see this uh, compressor stress is positive, so it's going to be stress uh, 75.7, that's the normal stress. And the shear stress, you see how it acts counterclockwise is going to be positive. So it will be 34.1. So again, we have our axis. So here we have shear stress and here we have normal stress. We're going to find two points. So point uh, here on the top, it's this one. Uh, this point is here because we have a uh, negative shear stress. And um, what we do next is, um, again, we uh, connect these two points. Please use a ruler for this. Um, don't draw the way that I drew because it's no straight line. Then we would find the center of the circle, C. We use a drawing compass to 
and draw a circle like this one. So this is nice and a perfect circle. And from this circle again, we can get uh, principal stresses. Um, this is going to be major principal stress. So we use uh, sigma one uh, to determine major principal stress. And this is going to be a minor principal stress. We use sigma three for that. So that's how it works.